everyone, Happy New Year to you all. I've been a bit quiet on bits and doings, so I've had rather a lot to do on my other channel, as some of you may have noticed. So um, this is the first video of 2018, and it's time I sorted my life out. Well, one aspect of my life that has been causing me the most stress. I'm not stressed at work, but I am stressed in the place where I shouldn't feel stressed, and that's my home, which to me is the most important thing in my life, my home. Um, it's always been the most important thing to me. I'm not career orientated. I'm not really money orientated. I, I'm not bothered about fashion. You know, I do have that little obsession that some of you know about. But apart from that, I just want to have a nice home to live in. And at the moment, I don't. Because what you see on my other channel is an illusion. I do like to look my other channel. I'm demonstrating vacuum cleaners. If I was to demonstrate a vacuum cleaner in a dirty, cluttered house, that wouldn't look very good, would it? So that's why the parts of my home you see on my videos always look pristine. But that is not reality. So I'm making a series of videos under my decluttering theme or Swedish death cleaning is the latest term for what I'm going to be doing. Now, um, it's a fairly new term for decluttering. Basically, it was a Swedish woman, I think, that coined it. And it's normally done by people in their 50s and above. And it's basically starting to clear stuff out of your life in order so when you kick the bucket, you're not leaving your relatives or friends with a load of stuff they've got to sort out. That's basically what Swedish death cleaning is. So that's what I'm going to start doing today, starting with um, my many, many DVDs. But first of all, I'm going to show you the reality of my bedroom at the moment. This is the worst cluttered room in the house. There is clutter everywhere. I try and keep the communal areas fairly clear, but uh, this is my space and it's a tip. So this is the reality of my bedroom at the moment. But um, I'm hoping with your support and God willing some motivation and some energy to do it, I'm going to sort this and then I can start decorating and then I will have the home I want to live in. Look at this. I can't get into these drawers because I've got vacuums piled up. How am I to edit bloody camera. How am I to edit videos in a professional manner? I do manage it, surprisingly manage it, not at the moment because that's all clean bedding and clothes on my chair. This is my desktop. Yeah. I've got that Vax uh, air purifier out because I'm hoping to take that away. Uh, but there's stuff, you know, there's some Christmas presents that need looking at, unboxing. Um, and on this side, I can sort of get into these wardrobes, but when I do, they're absolutely full. They are, they've got clothes in, but more vacuums and clothes. Um, so this is it. You know, I manage to get into my bed every night, but I'm often having to throw stuff off the bed in order to get into it, which is what I did uh, last night. So as you can see, it's not ideal. This would be a lovely, lovely room if it was tidy and what I used to do I used to just buy you know bought this storage thing it's not nice it wasn't meant for here it's meant to go in the loft area and I'm I was continually buying storage boxes and storage ute drawers and things hoping it would solve my problems but of course it doesn't because you've still got all the crap it's not just vacuum cleaners there's so much miscellaneous stuff that it's just overwhelming mainly electronics components, leads. I mean, I've got a drawer full, bottom drawer is just full of leads and adapters. I don't know what they're for. And then I'm thinking, well, if I throw it away, I might need it. I might think, oh God, that was for that. And now, you know, oh. So, um, well, should I dare show you into my ensuite? Now there is a, a black bin liner there because I have been emptying bins. So that's not normally there. There's, <laughs> you see, this is the thing. Another thing, I try and think, oh, I'm going to get fit, I'm going to get fit. And I buy stuff in order to get myself fit, but I never use them. That is a vibration thing that's been behind a chair in the living room. I've just moved it up here, but now it's living next to the toilet. <sighs> There's three vacuums in here, and I've just got 
just crap everywhere you know so this is what I'm doing this series for to to show you that hopefully there is light at the end of the tunnel oh no I need that light on I'm thinking turn the bathroom light turn the ensuite light off but we've actually got some sun it's winter and there's a bit of sun I do like days like this they're cold you won't be able to see out because it's going to do dark it's cold but it's sunny so what I'm doing today in my first death cleaning series is the easiest thing. Well, they say declutter clothes is quite easy to do. Um, but the next thing is my DVDs. Now, I'm up in my bedroom because... Up in the very top loft. Now, this bedroom is in the, the attic. But I do have storage space in the top loft there. I also have a little bit of space in the void at the front. There is a little behind that uh, chest there is a little hole where I can get into and behind the wardrobe there is a bigger hole I made bigger and put a, a new hatch on it there's a quite a large area that runs the full length of the house where I've got a lot of vacuums in but that is absolutely I can't get into it because it's chocker block so the last place I made storage was the top loft so up here in the top loft is something I have to keep this side is uh, if it focuses all my Christmas decorations are more or less in that space, the tree and everything. And the other side is going to focus. It's um, probably two thirds are DVD boxes and a few vacuums. So I'm gonna go up there, I'm gonna bring all my DVD boxes, they're just the empty boxes, and I'll show you why later. I'm gonna bring all those down, shove them on my bed, bring them downstairs into the living room where I've got some floor space and get all the actual discs, go through them, so I, I want to sort of get rid of at least three quarters of my DVDs. Well folks, I've just got my uh, new telescopic ladder and I've put it up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now this is the second one I bought. I had to buy another one because I left the one I had at my mum's to use there. And uh, so I ordered one from the shopping channel Ideal World. It seemed okay until I tried opening it and it wouldn't lock. Now these have to lock in each rung has to be fully locked and the newer ones have little indicator it's hard to show you on this it's not focusing but that should turn green when it's safe to walk on and um, if it shows red or part red green it's unlocked anyway the one i got from ideal world didn't work because one of the rungs didn't lock so i could push down on one side and it moved and there's no way i was going to risk climbing up a ladder only for it to go boop, 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 collapse on top of me and i'll be a gibbering heap of jelly underneath the ladder at the bottom so I wasn't going to risk that so that's going back to ideal world that's hassle that I didn't want not happy about that so I ordered this one for the same sort of price from Argos it is not as tall as the one I got from ideal world but it's considerably lighter but all I wanted this one for is basically for the loft as a temporary because I can't have a permanent loft ladder because it takes up storage space which I don't have so this is ideal for what I wanted it for so I'm quite happy it can stay in the bedroom in the wardrobe when I get some space so up here doo -doo -doo -doo, there's no lights either I haven't put any lights up here yet we can't really see much there's a toy vacuum there look Playmobil there is a vacuum cleaner here it's hard to see it's too dark well actually I do have a, a portable light I could have put on never mind anyway a few feet behind these boxes are all my DVD boxes so the next thing you'll see and because of that's the main space I've got to play with my bed gonna bring down everything shove it on the bed get all my DVDs out and we'll start some death cleaning shall we Welcome to Alexa, stop. I don't know if you heard that, folks. That, <clears throat> I'm just playing some calming music because I'm absolutely wound up. Really wound up. Get myself all agitated. You've not seen me angry. It's like the Incredible Hulk. You don't want to see me angry. Anyway, stuff is winding me up and other things are winding me up. But anyway, I'm trying to listen to some nice Beth Nielsen Chapman music, which normally makes me want to cry because it's all about death and crap. But anyway, that line, if you heard it, 
We walked into paradise. The angels lent us shoes. Because all that we own, we come to lose. That's exactly what, what, what this is about. I'm not going to be taking all this crap with me when I kick the bucket. I'll be free of all this material stuff. And I am just absolutely want to be more free of it. I'm not going to be ever totally free of it. I'm a material boy living in a material world. But i am started getting the DVDs down. Um, there's just three boxes and some bits and bobs. <sighs> My heart's racing. I know I've got to do it. I've got to do it. But looking at it, I'm thinking, oh, I want to watch that again. Or oh, I don't want to get rid of that. <clears throat> Like this, Tales of the City. Not Sex and the City, Tales of the City. So that's not, I want to keep that, you know. And things like One Foot in the Grave. Love One Foot in the Grave, want to keep all those. And this film with Julie Walters, Personal Services. I want to keep that. But then I'm thinking, oh, nearest and dearest. I could possibly get rid of those. I've got the whole box set as well and never really watched them. In Between Us, although I like In Between Us. You can see that on Channel 4, on demand, for free. So I'll probably get rid of those. Um, probably get rid of Audience with Kenneth Williams. And they see, there we are, the complete series of Nearest and Dearest. That can go. And Spitting Image, I might keep those. Oh, Birds of a Feather, though. I'm never getting rid of Birds of a Feather. I love Birds of a Feather. And watching. Oh, oh. This is going to be harder than I think. Anyway. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Uh, still got more to bring down from the loft. Right, I've managed to get it all down. It's not as much as I thought, to be honest. I'm feeling, have I missed some? There must be loads more somewhere else. So um, here they are. Let's hope, I mean, ideally, I'd like to reduce it to two boxes. I can't see that happening this time round. But anyway, here's my living room, just racked up with vacuum of the month on my other channel. Look, there's vacuums everywhere, look. Can't get away from the things. This, um, if you don't watch, I'll be very surprised if you don't, but if you don't watch my main channel, uh, this is my vacuum of the month. Ooh, it's all dusty there, look. This is the only vacuum I'm allowed to use for cleaning my home this month. Oh, this shark cordless doobry. Ugh. I'm saving up all the dirt, keep emptying it frequently. It's doing okay, but I can't wait for February, February to come along so I can start using something better. Something mains powered and German, I'm thinking. But anyway, it's okay. It's keeping my house clean, the carpets and floors clean. Obviously, it's not tidying up. That's down to me. All right, let's pop that to one side. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show you the whole process. I'm just going to show you the highlights if there is such a thing. But I'm going to grab myself a coffee or Kofi Annan, as we say in this house for some reason, and um, pop something on the television. Might choose one of these <laughs> DVDs, pop one of these in and have that one in the background as I'm sorting through. Some of them are going to be quick and easy, definitely in the get rid of pile. Um, and some will be an easy guess, definitely keep pile. But there's going to be the few, well, quite a few, at least maybe half to a quarter or a third that are going to be in the pile mm, should I or shouldn't I let's see how it goes I thought I'd uh, show you how I make a cup of coffee well basically I put the um, coffee in the mug like that um, I've heated the, co the kettle to 90 degrees not boiling and then I pour the nearly boiling water which is very difficult when you're trying to film into the mug up to about there sometimes I have it black but sometimes I don't then I stir it and then I go into this white box and select the soya milk now the reason I don't boil put it to boiling is the soya milk can curdle you see it still curdles a bit but you know oh oh there we are. I, I often have it black now after I had an experience with some soya milk from Mikado that was highly rated by the buyers. You know, I, I sorted them by, uh, you know, best rated. So I bought some and it was absolutely disgusting. So I've gone back to my regular brand. So, oh, there we are. That's not mine. I don't drink cow pus. 
So there we go, it looks a bit dark, but that's the nature of the beast. So that's a coffee, and then I'll pop that there because, well, I suppose I can do it one handed, can't I? Uh, oh, that way around. So I don't know why, but I had a hankering. I haven't had tea cakes in many a moon. What's those bits floating in there? Oh, it'd be okay. Hang on. Ah! No, I don't like dried fruit. I hate it. Don't like Christmas cake and all that palaver. But I, these are a bit small, but I went through a stage of sort of liking tea cakes. These are quite small tea cakes, aren't they? So I'm gonna have a couple of tea cakes. I think uh, setting three will be suffice. These are vegan. These are vegan, they're actually marked vegetarian and vegan. So I'll be having those with some uh, Vitalite, which is also vegan. And uh, it's about lunchtime. It's Sunday at the time of, oh my hand hurts. It's Sunday at the time of filming this. And it's about lunchtime. I'll be having a Sunday roast type dinner on a Sunday. A vegetarian one. I'm not vegan anyway. I try to be where I can. I'm certainly strict vegetarian. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the veganism has gone by the by a bit. But I never will buy cow's milk again. Never. This is new. Um, ooh. It's not finished. Hang on. Focus. You gonna focus? Focus. Um, it needs doors, frosted glass doors, and um, they should have come between Christmas and New Year, and they haven't. Um, this is from Ikea. We need a new table. Since I decorated, the, the old stuff didn't go. So we get we need a new white table. There's a picture that needs to go back up. And I was quite impressed with the, um, I've got a thing to put on the door, um, doors and drawer. So you press and they open. But at the moment, I've not fitted them. I'm just, um, pretty impressed with the quality of these IKEA units. Oh, it's got slow clothes look. Lovely. So just needs, and I've got lights, some lights that need fitting on the inside. So they'll shine through the frosted debris. Um, as I say, we need a new table in here because it just doesn't go. We're thinking of a circular white one or one with glass. I can smell burning. Oh, Roger. Ow! Things are hot when they come out of a toaster. Now, don't do this. Oh, some people do it. I do it sometimes, but I make sure that I don't touch the element. Mm. Yeah, I've gone a bit too far with those. Anyway, you don't want to see me battering my uh, tea cakes, do you? That's not a euphemism. No. Oh, no, don't even kid about that, Rog. Turn it off. I don't know if I would get a shot from this because it like um, they're like um, a glass element thing. Right. right, this is very hard to do one-handed. So I'm going to butter those or vitalite those, nibble on them, and get sorting. Crikey, this is thrilling stuff for you, isn't it? Well, folks, it's hours and hours later, and well, the pile hasn't got much bigger. The initial pile. Well, I suppose it's. I've probably added another twenty. To that pile that was quite easy so there's the pile that's definitely going this is a small pile i've just thrown on this chair of things i'm going to look at and um you know i've got things like this i've never watched for my childhood paddington bear i mean what's the point i might watch some of that and again for my childhood the mr men i had all the books oh, and you just i don't know why i bought them going to watch this again Joan Rivers at the London Palladium and then probably get rid of that one this I've never I got this from a pound shop I think Jeff Daniels daft as a brush the new comedy that sucks and uh, it's a comedy about a man who's selling these vacuums um, I think I've never seen it and I got this from Amazon for about two pounds I don't know why it's some sort of not a sitcom, not a sitcom, a daytime, no, it's like a drama with men with the tops off. I don't know why on earth I got, oh, look, he's kissing him. 
I might watch 10 minutes of that. I'm going to give some of these 10 minutes. If they don't grab me, they're going. And this, something I vaguely remember from the 80s with Pauline Collins and John Alderton, husband and wife, Forever Green. I'll, I haven't watched that. I'll give that 10 minutes, see if I like it. These Mrs. Brown's live box set. Gone right off Mrs. Brown's boys since the last two shows at Christmas. They were pants. This sitcom I vaguely remember from the 80s, never watched it. And again, another sitcom, I think that's in the 90s. Fairly recently bought these and not watched them, so I'll try them out and see. So, probably most of those will be going uh, as well. These are, well, apart from The Simpsons, these are definite keeps. I'm umming and ahhing about getting rid of that. I used to absolutely adore The Simpsons from when it first started. When I first got satellite television in the old days, if you remember Sky, folks, in the old days, before it went digital, you had a bigger dish and you could get pick up all the foreign channels, you could pick up German channels and Dutch channels and all sorts. It was great until they went digital and then it was just Sky. So I, I sort of saw the first Simpsons and I was hooked. And I think probably up to, well, I've got up to about, I don't know what season I'm going up to. I might keep, say, six of those and get rid of the others because I'm up to 200 episodes there. It's gone crap, to be honest, Simpsons. Something I love and adore and will never get rid of and watch it nearly every year, but I haven't watched it for a couple of years. I'll probably not watch it this year. The House of Elliot, I love it. This is mainly comedy that I like. You'll see the odd bits of costume drama. Yurang, my lord. Spitting image, I'll keep. Keeping up appearances. A lot of viewers will know, even if you're American, you'll know keeping up appearances. That's my boy with Molly Sugden. Keep that. I absolutely adore a fine romance with husband and wife. You know who that is. What's her name? Judy Dench and her husband who's long died, uh, Michael Williams. And these middle, these are very, I love middle class comedies. And you cannot get any more middle class. Well, there's another one I'll show you that's very middle class, but Fresh Fields. Two things that make this, and French Fields, which is okay, but I preferred Fresh. Two things that make this extremely middle class, apart from the fact they live in a place called Barnes, which is a very perish part of London, outer London, live in a big detached house. The mother is living, Julia Mackenzie's mother lives in a little granny flat in the bottom of the garden, so that's so middle class. And the other very, very middle class is After Henry, and again, the mother played by Joan Sanderson. She lives um, in the basement of the big house where Prunella Scales' character lives. So you cannot get any more middle class than a granny flat and a big house and a posh southern accent. Love it. Heidi High, of course. Sorry. Dad's Army, I'm keeping. The Upper Hand, that was a 90s comedy based, if you're American. That was our version of Who's the Boss? Watching. Fantastic comedy from the 80s set in Liverpool. One foot in the grave. I don't have to say any, anything about that. Steptoe and Son. Classic um, 60s, 70s comedy. Frasier, I'm keeping all of those. Keeping all my carry on films. Of course, are you being served? Birds of a feather, they're in my top tens. Drop the Dead Donkey, Big Pile of Only Fools and Horses. Terry and June, that's another quite middle class. George and Mildred, love it. Dynasty, preferred it to Dallas. Um, I think I'm missing one box set, so I'll go through those and see which one I'm... I haven't watched them though. <laughs> Golden Girls, of course, and Britus Empire. Oh, and another comedy quite like Goodnight Sweetheart. So there, keeps. Right, Daisy is wondering what on earth is going on. It's Daddy sorting out his mess, Daisy. Okay, so here's uh, another load of stuff that, um, yes, it's in the keep section. Um, that's mainly all my films I've decided to keep. I'm getting rid of some. Oh, Daisy May. This is a good film if you, uh, if you like sort of the oldie-fashioned 50s sort of perfect family. And this is the epitome. This lady, um, what's her name? Who's, who, who's she? 
Oh, Julianne Moore. This lady keeps a lovely immaculate house. You can just imagine her using all the latest Hoover products of the time. And she um, had a maid, I think, as well, and a black gardener. And she, there he is, and she had a bit of a thing with the black gardener. Well, it was, it was not the thing to do, to even talk to the black gardener. But anyway, her husband was a bit of a Nancy boy, and there was... Um, having all sorts of dirty sex with men on the side. But it's a very good film. I recommend it. Far From Heaven, so I'm keeping that. I'm keeping uh, classic 80s, 1980 film, 9 to 5. The Sex and the City films I'm keeping, but I'm getting rid of all my Sex and the City um, series because I've seen them so many times. They're on my Now TV box, which is a bit like Netflix for any of you who don't know what Now TV is. And I can watch them whenever. Another film I like, uh, Big Business. Ghost, another Sex and City movie, another film, another Bette Midler film, Ruthless People, that's a great film. Bridget Jones liked them. This was um, a seminal film, is that the correct term, of um, my youth-ish, well I was in my 20s. This came out and I wasn't out at the time and I remember getting this. This is sort of they class it a modern day fairy tale. It's about these two boys living on a housing estate in London and they sort of fall in love. And I remember watching that with the volume really quiet so my mum and dad didn't know I was watching it, you know. But that, um, it's a, it's a good film that. Watership Down, A Weepy, Shirley Valentine, absolute classic. Dick Emery, that's another, I like Mask, I like Cher, um, I liked Mask for the other reason. That, that reason there. <laughs> Bridget Jones, The Queen. I like that film because it does remind me of the whole Diana thing. I remember it very clearly and a lot of the footage in that. Um, it just reminds me of, of what I was doing at the time. Rita Sue and Bob's, Bob 2, that was set around Bradford area near me. Um, includes the classic song, We're Having a Gang Bang. Private Benjamin, Goldie Horn. And a Julie Walters film about uh, the Madam Cynthia Payne, who used to take, uh, used to um, employ prostitutes basically in her house. She was a madam. Um, Love Actually, one of my favourite films. These are Blu rays. That's another from the same stable as Love Actually, the same writer. That's a nice film, about time. Forrest Gump. Well, Bridget Jones. One of my all times, you've seen Tootsie earlier. Pleasantville, that's a nice film as well, if you like the 50s type of thing. Yeah, I like that film, so I'm keeping that. Working Girl. Well, I'm only keeping that because I bought it two years ago to watch around Christmas time and never watched it. I don't think it's very good. I still haven't watched it. The Lovely Bones. I might watch that once more and then get rid of that. I seem to remember it was quite nice, but a bit disturbing. Calendar Girls, classic. Mel Gibson in Tim. Well, I don't like Mel Gibson now, but in that he did wear some very, very short shorts. Baby Boom, that's Diane Keaton. I like that film. And another one, Goldie Horn. Saw that in the cinema in London with my eldest brother many, many years ago, whenever that came out. Educating Rita, another classic. And this by Set by Centennial Man. It's a Robin Williams film, and you're thinking it's sort of like a comedy, but it isn't. It was uh, quite touching and thought-provoking, that film. I recommend that if you haven't seen it. And uh, um, she did that well. Meryl Streep, Iron Lady, My Fair Lady, and Muriel's Wedding. So that's about the only sort of films I think I've kept. And then there's other bits. This is a very good, I don't know if you get this in the States, sort of quite a gay sort of um, comedy. They only made two series, Beautiful People. I've got those on Blu-ray. Um, New Statesman, British comedy with Rick Mail, 70s comedy, Man About the House. I've not seen any of these, Hale and Paces, so I might watch those and might get rid. That's it. Sickness and In Health, another 80s comedy. All my Vicky Wood stuff, wouldn't part with that. Sort of the old Victoria Wood things, Vicky, Victoria Wood, Vicar of Dibley. That's quite a good good thing from BBC Three, Mongrels, Dinner Ladies, another Victoria Wood thing. Royal Family, Sybil, you'll know this if you're in America. I'm keeping those. And these are my sort of classic Coronation Streets. I can't stand the show now. I haven't watched it for many years. But these are sort of classic 80s Coronation Street here. Then I've got some 90s. And then there's a 50, 
50th anniversary set with uh, selected episodes. I liked it then, I don't like it now. It's the same with a lot of things in here. I liked them at the time. Modern Family has, has absolutely wrecked it for me. The latest one I saw has made me put all my Modern Families here in this pile. Um, it was one with Chris Martin and it was absolutely appalling. Chris Martin can't act for toffee. It was shite. So Modern Family's going, but I can watch it whenever I want, it's always on. All my friends' box sets are going only because I can watch them whenever. And if I'm that desperate to buy them again, I can just buy the Blu-ray box set. But I bought it in the early days of the box sets where you've got huge individual discs, take up so much room. Another Dream On, do you remember that if you're in America? Almost six feet under are going because I'm watching them now on the Now TV box. No need to keep them. There's some films that I won't watch again. Devil Wears Prada. Little Britain gone completely off that. More films. Married with Children. The only reason I'm getting rid of those, I've got a couple of those. I do like it, but you can't really get the rest of them in the UK. They didn't release all of them and it seems pointless. I can import an, um, a German version, I think. With you, with 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 um, It's dubbed in German, but you can of course watch the original soundtrack. Uh, Mamma Mia the movie, I've seen it so many times, it's always on the TV, there's no point in keeping it. Gavin and Stacey again, I like it, but there's no point. Red Dwarf. Now what do I want to show you that I can't stand? Green Grass, it's Only Fools and Horses sort of spin-off, not as good. Um, this is various, various things that I've either grown out of, or Curb Your Enthusiasm, I've got all of those still like it but I've just watched them all on the now TV box they're taking up space Red Dwarf Back to the Future trilogy the only decent Back to the Future was the first one Back to the Future 2 was okay uh, Black Adder even I'm getting rid of all my family guy are going I can't stand that anymore there's my friends more friends Queer as Folk both the UK and American versions Caroline in the City it's a bit of an obscure one. You might know that if you're in America. But what I, I instantly knew I would never watch again is, where is it? Well, they're all here. League of Gentlemen. I cannot, I, I can't watch that show anymore. I can't watch anything that's got those people in it or who have had a hand in writing. And it might sound silly Anyway, I've got League of Gentlemen. If you know what League of Gentlemen is, you'll know. They have also done a thing called Inside Number 9. And I've seen most of those. And I started watching some of, some, some of them recently. And they are the most... They're not. I don't know why they class them as comedy. They've got some of the most disturbing things I've ever seen on television. And these come... These are supposed to come from people... People's imagination. But there's some very, very dark stuff that makes me think, you know, that can't come from an imagination of somebody who doesn't know some very dark things. So I can't watch them. I cannot. I recoil at the sight of them. I've seen them on telly. Any of those people from League of Gentlemen, that's it. Silly, I know, but no, I can't do it. Getting all worked up over it, Daisy. Hey? More stuff I'm keeping. Just quickly whiz through. A lot of stuff I haven't watched. This was an 80s sitcom. It Takes a Worried Man. Fry and Laurie, they had a sketch show. Gath and Kim, look at me, look at me. Love that. Miranda, of course. Alan Partridge things. That's uh, good. I'd recommend Suburban Shootout. Jam and Jerusalem. This is hilarious. The worst week of my life. I think they did an American version. And the worst Christmas of my life. Absolutely fantastic. A couple of drag queens there. Hinge and Bracket. Good old Anthea being the perfect housewife. These are good if you like your history. Look at life. I've got a couple of these. Oh no, I have got two. Where's the other one gone? Well, that's one of them. That's on science. So all these old classic rank organisation feature features about various 
day-to-day -day things and it's really interesting and these are public information films that we used to see in the 70s when we were kids to scare us Charlie says they're caught that is good life I'll never get rid of that more fairly obscure sitcoms joking apart no place like home the other half with Lorraine Chase Luton Airport sitcom three of a kind with a very young Tracy Ullman Last Tango in Halifax, Alexis Sale, Phoenix Knights, Titty Bang Bang, Don't Look at Me, I'm Shy, Scottish Comedy, Sketch, uh, sketch Show, Naked Video, 2.4 Children, they've only ever released Series 1 to 3, Why Not with the Others, that's that's funny, another 80s comedy, Chance in a Million, Chance in a Million, with um, Brenda Blethen and Simon Callow, Duchess of Duke Street, I like that, period drama, and there's more Catherine Tay, Agony Butterflies. Da da da. That's my sort of boxed set things. Now that is Norman Wisdom. Um, Mr. Rusty Skull from Rusty Skull Productions didn't know who Norman Wisdom was. There we are. He says he likes things, you know, from the 50s and the old ways, you know. And he didn't know who Norman Wisdom was. How ridiculous is that? Norman Wisdom was a very popular. Uh, comedy actor comedian in the 50s you know he was big in the 50s and um, some very classic films so check him out but I've even got Top Cat although in the UK in England it was called Boss Cat because there was a cat food called Top Cat and the BBC weren't allowed to say Top Cat for some reason Flintstones as well there look more sort of dramas quickly go through these oh um well I've got like Wonder Woman heart to heart the Norman conquests that was actually set in East Grinstead where I used to live um, band of gold about a bunch of prostitutes widows about a bunch of gangsters moles uh, and I've got tales of the city that American thing Armistead Morpen that's good some music things mainly Abba hang on have I seen Good Life I've seen Good Life twice haven't I oh no I haven't I've just come back I've just come back on myself and there's more it's just I got to the end of it and I thought oh, I can't be bothered so there's just more oh, stuff here girls on top the comeback that was good with Lisa Kudrow uh, I enjoyed that there's, I think she's done two series I don't know if she's done any more but that's that's pretty good I like that and this little sort of drama about Kenny Everett fantastic Kenny Everett and more things you know got Adrian Mole that's I remember that from the 80s um, this is good the high life recommend that I only did one it's got a very young Alan Cumming you might know him in America um, oh Dr Beeching another from the older Stable who brought us um, I being served and um, you rang my lord Heidi hi uh, what were their names <laughs> two famous uh, writers anyway Galt not Goldman Simpson David Croft David Croft and the other one <laughs> David Croft and the other one Grace and Favor spin-off I think it's called are you being served again in the United States Stanley Baxter Ab Fab at 20. Of course, I've got all the Ab Fabs. Right, so that's it. One last thing I'll show you before I go. My eldest brother, Mark, bought me this one, one Christmas, I think. I don't know where he got it from. Probably um, X Rental. This is called Oversexed Rug Suckers for Mars. You'll never trust your vacuum cleaner again. And it's 18 certificate. Um, I can't remember the plot line, but basically... Well, let's see. Shall we, shall we see what this is about? There is a little vacuum. Oh, there's a lady. She has got a top on. But there's a vacuum. Can you see? Just there. With a sort of... There is a dust buster with legs and a head. And that, I think, is a Eureka upright. But um, I think the baby... Yes, I think the, the vacuum's had it off with that lady and produced that. Anyway, let's see what it says. Acid rain, pollution, litter, toxic waste, algae, algae bloom... The experiment has gone wrong. Humanity is a disaster area. The alien master decides it's time for a clean-up. And what better way is there than creating a new species, vac vacuuspians? Is that, 
vacuum. I can't really pronounce that. A new animal, half man, half vacuum cleaner. It's bound to clean up after itself. Unfortunately, the brought to life vacuum cleaners proved to be the same old randy, unruly bunch as the humans. Vernon, the smelliest tramp in the world, cleans up his act with his new love, Dusty, but he is getting sucked into something that will destroy him. As for Rena, she's not having a happy time with Charlie. He wants love, peace and mung beans, but she wants booze, rock and roll and sex. Getting jumped by the hoover isn't exactly what she had in mind, and being mum to a mutant spog is just too much. <laughs> Well, I think I better watch that. I still do have a, a video recorder. I must transfer some of the highlights. Shall I? Shall I transfer some of the highlights of this? I'm sure I've obviously watched some of it. Look, I haven't rewound it, naughty boy. <laughs> I might transfer the, um, show you the vacuum related bits. As long as there's no naughty, naughty nipples showing, I might be able to get away with that on YouTube. <laughs> oh dearie me, honestly. There we are. So look that up in your local uh, bargain bin. Oversexed rug suckers from Mars. I'm sure it'll be a classic. Well, that's it for my first video of 2018. I hope you found it enjoyable or interesting or even disturbing. Who knows? I've still got lots of work to do, but uh, at least I've started it. The start of my Swedish death cleaning. More Swedish death cleaning videos to follow, I expect, when I sort out my underpant drawer my big collection of used toilet tissue and possibly my huge collection of vacuum cleaners might get thinned out and taken to the tip. Who knows? So until then it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from little Daisy too. Goodbye everyone and God bless.